Kia ora and welcome to the second part of the Chemistry in 48 Hours where we're looking at the words of chemistry. In part one we looked at this ABC, the symbols of the elements. Now we're going to see how we can use those symbols to make the words or the formulae. So what is valency? Valency is a measure of an element's combining power. So how can it combine with other elements? If you think of a jigsaw puzzle, and you take it apart like that little wooden one I've shown there. The front and the rear end can only combine with one other piece, whereas the middle one can combine with two other pieces. So the combining power for the middle one, or its valency, is two, but the ones for the front and the rear have a combining power of only one, or a valency of one. So when we have a compound, a compound is made up of two or more elements, and they always combine in a particular ratio, depending on the valency of the elements. So thinking of oxygen, oxygen is like, sorry, like water. Oxygen is like the middle piece, so it has a valency of two, and hydrogen is like the front and the rear end, which only has a valency of one. So you'll always have two hydrogens to every one oxygen. Now here's a product table, and we can use it to work out the valency, particularly if you've learned them by group because group 1, all those elements have a valency of 1. Group 2, valency of 2. Group 13, valency of 3. Group 14, valency of 4. Now it starts to go down. Nitrogen uh, and phosphorus and so on in group 15 have a valency of 3. And we can work it out by saying 18, subtract the group number. 18, because that's the total number of groups. Subtract 15 equals 3. Can you work out what the valency will be for elements in group 16? I hope you've worked it out as 2, because 18 subtract 16 is 2. Group 17, all those elements have a valency of 1, because 18 subtract 17 is 1. And I hope you can work out now why the last group, 18, is known as the noble gases, and they don't combine, because 18 subtract 18 is 0, so they have no combining power. Let's practice by writing the valence of the element. Please learn the elements by group and otherwise have a periodic table handy. Pause the video while you do this. Here are the answers. I hope you got them right. Just look at the group numbers and see if you can work it out. Now how do we use the valency? So if I have an element with a valency of 1, and another element with a valency of 1, and I've drawn little hooks to represent the valency, so it's got one hook each. If all those hooks are held, then that compound will be stable, and that will give you our ratio. So if I have two elements with a valency of 1, they will combine in a 1 is to 1 ratio. If I have two elements with a valency of 2 each, they can also combine in a 1 is to 1 ratio because all those hooks are being held. But if I have an element with a valency of 2 and an element with a valency of 1, I'm going to need another of the blue elements to make sure all those hooks are being held. So I have a ratio of 1 is to 2. Here is an example of an element with a valency of 3. And can you see I have to keep on adding the elements until all the hooks are being held. So there's my ratio of two green elements to every three pink elements. A ratio of two is to three. If I have a green and a blue, I'm going to have a ratio of one green to three blue. And finally, if I had two greens together, it's again a one is to one ratio. Let's look at some real examples. Hydrogen is in group one, so it has a valency of one. Chlorine is in group 17, 18 subtract 17 is 1. So they will combine in a 1 is to 1 ratio because we can see all the hooks are being held. So its formula is HCl. We don't write any 1s, we never write 1s in chemistry. If I have calcium, group 2, valency of 2 with fluorine, that's in group 17, you can see I'm going to need 2 fluorines for every 1 calcium. And we write that ratio number as a subscript. Notice we didn't write the 1 for calcium. We never write 1s. 
So our ratio there is two fluorines to every one calcium. Some more examples, oxygen with oxygen. So when oxygen combines with each other, I'm going to just have two atoms in the molecule. So it's going to be have a formula of O2. Now I haven't defined atoms and molecules yet. We will do that later. If I have aluminium with chlorine, I hope you can see I need three of them. So my ratio will be AlCl3. The three is being a subscript and we leave out the one. So one Al to every three chlorines. So time for practice, pause the video and see if you can work out the correct ratio. And I hope you got the correct answer with these ans um, for this little exercise. Notice that for potassium iod, the last one, K1I1 is incorrect because we never write the ones. We don't always want to write the hooks, so a swap and drop method is a quick way of doing it. Write the valencies and then swap them across. So the valency for sulfur gets dropped down to the bottom of aluminium and the valency for aluminium gets dropped down to the bottom of sulfur. And that gives you the ratio of two aluminiums to three sulfurs. So my formula is Al2S3. If I had water, the for, um, valency for hydrogen is one because it's in group one. Oxygen is in group 16, so has a valency of 2. Swap them across. I'm going to need 1 oxygen for every 2 hydrogens, giving me a formula of H2O. And of course, we never write the 1s. So we don't say H2O1, just H2O. Here's some more practice. So use the swap and drop method to write the formulae for this. Here are the answers, and I hope you managed to work them out. Right, finally, time for tips. Learn the elements by group. I know this is the third time I've said it. If you don't know them, at least have the periodic table handy because it will help you tremendously with writing formulae. And finally, the joke. See you in the next lesson. Goodbye.